call the meeting to order. And uh, the uh, first item on the agenda is to ask all our members who are uh, appearing remotely to, uh, to announce themselves. Rosie Kruger. Lauren. Tom Kilmurray. Sal Alfano. Lauren, I think that leaves you. Lauren Hurl. Sorry, I think I said overlapping with someone else. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, next. Uh, we have uh, to approve the agenda. Um, I think the, the one change on, on the agenda is that the uh, Rome Vermont uh, appeal has been withdrawn, so we'll not be taking that up, but all the others are, uh, are good to go. And uh, unless there's any uh, objection, I will consider the agenda approved. Okay, um, next we have uh, what uh, John and I talked about doing this time, which is a consent agenda. These are all uh, business personal property tax abatements for uh, properties that have either gone out of business or moved out of the city. And uh, so we see no point in making our uh, delinquent tax collector waste your time trying to chase down money that's not there to be collected. So she is here to uh, answer any questions that anyone may have, but uh, I would entertain a motion to approve abatements uh, 3A through I on uh, mass. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, great, thank you. Next up, we have a set of abatement hearings. And so I'll ask anyone who's uh, planning on testifying to, uh, to raise your right hand. Uh, do you solemnly affirm subject to the pains and penalties of perjury? that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. yes uh, great, thank you. Okay, first up is Capital Plaza Corporation. Is that, is that you? Yeah. Okay, why don't you step up? Um, we have your materials, but why don't you... Would you like this one? Right there is fine. <laughs> Okay, so why don't you just introduce yourself and tell us uh, what what you need us to know? Uh, yeah, so Guy Al, I'm representing Champs to Management, Capital Plaza, uh, area general manager, and just here to practically just state that revenues aren't where it needs to be. You know, we still have outstanding construction, still have not recovered from our losses. Um, both elevators are down. I'm not functioning right now. Still. Yeah, try to get that back in play. And then we have, uh, we did our soft opening today for our restaurant. Um, so revenue just isn't where it should be. And uh, for June, we did land 50% under revenue than we did last year. So let them let you know. And are, at this point, are you uh, running in the red? You have a net net loss on current operating. Yeah, it's, we haven't recovered from it yet, so I'm like definitely up riding there. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so what is your specific request? Uh, for the tax abatement, I believe. Mm -hmm. so. And and so you are requesting to. Have a full abatement of the fourth quarter tax uh, <laughs> in the amount of seventy nine thousand and change. Correct. Folks, does anybody have questions? 
Sure. Um, so the basis on which you're asking for is inability to pay, is that right? Um, that is correct. And I think I have Ravi on the call if I'm missing anything, Ravi. But that is correct. So you so you are unable to pay those taxes. Hello, everyone. Oh, Ravi, okay. Do you have something to add to that? Um, can everyone hear me? Sorry, yes. I, I'm just joining remotely. Um, I, I handle accounting for the location. Um, yeah, so it has been tough time even, even, even after opening up since since April, you know, the revenue has been down 50%. We are, we are trying to manage the cash flow as well as payments to vendors and trying to focus on making payments to the construction team that have, that have worked in last 11 months to get the hotel up and running, you know. And with the elevator down, our fifth floor is still been unused, and um, we we we, got, we some of the tenant have left. The fifth floor tenant left us, and there is nothing we could find that, who can come back to that space. Okay, um, Rosie. Um, so typically when a taxpayer says that they're not able to pay, we we ask for <laughs> um, some more information about um, why they're not able to pay and what um, avenues they've tried already. Um, so obviously the Capitol Plaza is a significant asset. Um, what have you done in terms of taking on loans or um, you know looking to to use that asset to be able to pay this debt? Um, so yeah, for loans, again, we just took over the property last year in July, you know, so it, it's still new to get another loan on top of what we initially had. The value has gone down because of the overall picture that took place with the flood situation. Um, the insurance money has still not uh, come in. Um, insurance uh, team is still working with the insurance company to get doc the documentation and everything is ready. So it's it's been really tough. All we are doing right now is to get the payment to made to the suppliers and the electricity vendors and other utilities so that we can keep operating the hotel and get the rooms uh, you know available in the market to for for guests to stay in so typically we'd be looking for um you know your revenues versus expenses in more significant detail than what you've provided here um right is, is that uh, something that you're able to provide I mean, I mean, I I can give you a rough number. The the revenue for the month of uh, June, because that that that's ended. July is still you know a couple of days to go. June we, we the room revenue was around around two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. Our mortgage and utilities and itself was mo more than what the revenue was. So every month since even after opening in April, every month we the owners have been putting in the money so that the, we can keep running the hotel as it is. And do you have the ability to generate financial statements that show the uh, revenues and the expenses for each of the uh, each each month since you reopened? Yes, we can do that. Okay, Mary. Yeah, I would. I mean, this is deeply sympathetic to the situation they're in, just like all of our commercial built uh, properties and residences. Um, I like to see the revenues and expenses for the period that they're asking for forgiveness. And I'd also like to understand better what the vacancy, what the vacancies are. And so I understand their testimony, both orally and written is that they haven't been able to fill back some of their spaces but some of them are operating and I would like to know what that is. And then I'd also like to understand the portion of rooms that they're able to sell. I mean, they, 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 the testimony indicated that they had two floors that they were able to rent on and are they renting those? So I just a, a much better picture. I mean, this is a really significant ask of the taxpayers of Montpelier. We need to understand it better. Okay, I, I suggest we take no action on this tonight um, and uh, 
come up with a date where you can come up with the information and then we reschedule to take it up again. We do have another meeting that we're going to have to do anyway. So. Okay, and you uh, could probably keep your voice up because I so that people so, can hear. Yes, sorry. We do have, we are going to have to have another meeting before too long. We've got a couple others that are on there. And I'll just say about this, if I can, that I, I think the question for me is going to be, um, does the, do the taxpayers, should the taxpayers be paying the entire tax bill for the entire year? Is that really reasonable to ask? And I think that's going to be the question for me. <laughs> I'd also like to ask that they come back with some, um, significant more documentation on the things that they have done to, they presented a bunch of um, difficulties in the the letter about trying to get the um, property repaired. Um, other landlords have been able to get their properties repaired. And so I would like to hear more about what efforts they've taken on that. Um, I also don't think that we've typically viewed a general inability to rent space as a, um, a reason that we grant abatement. Um, we really have in the past been a lot um, less <laughs> less willing to, to grant um, abatement on the inability to pay argument. Um, and we're really looking for um, folks showing that they've taken every alternative avenue, including taking on debt, um, and that this is really the last resort. Um, so I don't think that's really presented in the documentation here and would invite them the the hotel to come back with uh, more significant documentation in the, in that regard. Yeah, if I don't recall in the time I've been on this board having either having or granting a uh, abat abatement request for commercial property that hasn't uh, that has that had had financial difficulty. I'm not saying that saying that it hasn't happened, but I don't recall it happening. Mary. Um, and I would suggest that if we could get this, uh, if the city could receive this information a bit before the meeting so that the um, perhaps the staff can take a look, the finance staff can take a look at what's being provided and kind of poke at it and see if it's sufficient um, to kind of for us to be able to understand more fully what the request is mm -hmm. so that that we use this time productively. Yep. I know that they also asked for a reassessment. Yeah, I assume that the there the an appeal is going to come in now that the uh, the grand list has been issued. I don't think they made the deadline. Oh, um, but I'll have to check. Okay. Could this letter have been? understood to be a request and did it come in in time if we want to be generous or no? No, okay. Okay, so there you've got some uh, guidance on what to do. I suggest you be in touch with uh, with the city to figure out what, uh, what we're gonna be looking for. I think you've got some idea of what people are thinking. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Thanks. John, are you driving the, uh, the screen up there? Yeah. Whoever's driving. Yeah, I, sure, yeah. could, could we set it to uh, speaker view so that if, if, if one of the members is speaking, we can all see who, who it is? Yeah. Great. Thanks. Next up, we have Mary Alice Clark. <clears throat> is that you, Mary Alice Clark? Yes, it is. Okay, come on up. All right. Why don't you, you're again here for uh, the plan of being unable to pay your taxes. So why don't you tell us uh, what your situation is? Okay. Uh, I live at the end of the Grand Street Bridge. I uh, bought a house there three three years ago. Very first house on the street. 
Um, well, last year I was flooded seriously with the runoff water from uh, Berlin Street comes down and I'm like the drain at the bottom of the hill. But I, I've faced this stuff before and uh, when I bought the place, you know, I knew it could happen and probably would happen. Um, and, um, but in two years ago, May, when I was living there and working at the co-op, uh, a Northern Black Widow female spider decided to nest in my leg one night it's the most horrible thing, and I'm not going to even go into details because it is true. I and mean, you can verify it with the ER because I had to go up recently. But it has kind of uh, really limited my ability to work since then because I couldn't get the right medical treatment. It wouldn't lance it and dig out everything. And so it's been coming out over two years, and I feel poisoned most of the time. And it's just starting to let up. Uh, and, and I'm feeling good, <laughs> but I, uh, uh, and I've been pushing as hard as I can every day, you know, just to get up and do basic tasks. But, um, I did put in a, a real good drainage system. So the past two floods have not affected me. And I had Charles Davis from Montpelier here who helped me. Um, and, uh, also, I've been doing a lot of work at the end of my driveway um, because when they repaved last year, they didn't leave it properly. And I've been out there with the teams from Pike and from Waters trying to get a better solution. Plus, they did not locate the, um, well, they didn't line up the low point with the drain. There's like a 10 foot difference. The low point's way over here. And the drain's over here and it's up too high. So I'm out there trying to, you know, well, we put risers on. I said, you didn't need to put risers on, you need to put lowers on. So I have been sort of trying to negotiate that, which is, you know, at the end, there's a sidewalk between my driveway and the road. All that's changed. I lost three parking places uh, that Heather Price um, had secured. That isn't so much the deal, but I feel like I'm doing a lot of things uh, just because I have to there that maybe, you know, should be covered by a, a city worker. But I know that I would never ask for that because I have been a city worker for 10 years. I work for the MPD in parking. And um, uh, anyway, long story short, uh, I'm struggling, but I'm making it. I'm, I'm coming back. <laughs> and I was thinking, actually, I think this new tax bill, well, I, mine was down. And I was, I think I can do it this time. So uh, anyway, I just was looking for a quarter. Uh, and I, I think I was turned down from the flood first round. And um, yeah. OK. Anybody have any questions? Again, I can tell you that what we tend to be looking for in these cases is information about the person's income and the, and the expenses oh. which demonstrates why the person can't make uh, oh, okay. make the payments. Um, well, and if you don't have it with you tonight, oh, that's okay because, because we can certainly uh, Get it. take this up again at the next meeting. Uh, no, you know, I'm not coming back. And I think I really, I, you know, I'm going to tell all of you, this is like the third meeting that I've sort of been summoned to. And, and it says on the papers that you sent me, if you're not here, you know, uh, we're, we're going to take care of this without you here. And I'm saying, good, you know, because I think you've stretched it way too long and it's really inefficient how many people have been involved. And I, um, I guess I would have taken the no, the hard no, but Bev convinced me to try and you know uh, it wasn't a bad thought but I did tell her when I came in the last time this shouldn't be going on and on and on like this I you know say no 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 is no um, just give me a little time that's all I really wanted at the end but um, anyway is that it see that's why I said I couldn't come I see, I see. <laughs> thank you anyway I couldn't come any other members have any questions Mary it looked like you were I, I can appreciate that it's frustrating and it's confusing to folks who don't come to these meetings regularly. But 
we also, you know, have to take care of the taxpayers. No, I money. get that. I yeah. get that. I'm saying that too. Yeah. You hear me saying that? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I, I, I was assuming that you were asking for, well, I don't know what you're asking for. Just, Is just enough just, time just to pay back. What I owe, um, maybe a year, 12 months, something like that, without sending a collector after me? Is that unreasonable? Or I don't know what the what the rules are. Uh, I don't know what our, our rules are about that either. <laughs> well, um, I think... So you're not, but to be clear, you're not asking to not pay the tax. Correct. You're just asking for some time. Correct. And I'm assuming that that includes that that we not also penalize you for not paying for it. So really from interest? the interest in can if you want. Like I said, yeah, you know, I give you time. I just want to make sure that we're all clear with the request. That would be wonderful. I uh, you know I, and and I really like being an example to people, you know, and, and especially at the lower end. And I'm not even gonna go in, but I'm seeing these little miracles every day in the lower end. And, and and it's pretty exciting actually to be effective when I didn't feel like I've been effective at a whole lot of things my whole life. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I think we have the ability to abate t penalties and interest, yeah. even if we're not abating the uh, okay. underlying tax. Uh, that, that would be wonderful. And, and who knows, I might, you know, I might come into some money between now and then. I mean, 12 months, would that be reasonable? Uh, just, or, well, <laughs> someone should make a motion, and I suspect it would pass. We'll see. So I move that we provide the um, taxpayer with an additional 12 months to make this tax payment, and that we evade the um, penalties and interest while she's in the process of making that those payments. I second that. Thank you. Is there any any discussion? Rosie. Sorry, I'm just going to note that um, I'm without seeing more information about why this is needed. I, I would be against it. Um, you know, if if the taxpayer wanted to come back with that information, then I would definitely consider it. But I don't want to start a. Um, on the path of kind of waiving penalties and fees um, without holding folks to a higher standard there. Okay. Any, anybody else, any other discussion? Just for the record, I'm making some assumptions because one of the pieces of information that was provided to us has to do with what the, um, you know, that summary document that we get from the tax department that says what the state payment is and as well as what the whole tax bill is. And there is some forgiveness on um, that's based, I assume, on some income sensitivity. So I'm assuming that we're looking at a pretty constrained income. But I agree that normally we should be asking for more complete information, but I'm comfortable with where we've landed. Okay, if we're ready for vote, all those that oh, we're going to uh, have to take a roll call because it's going to be by vote, starting with you. Yes. Uh, Mary. Yes. Yes. Charlotte. Yes. Mary. Yes. John, you're not voting probably. Uh, Rosie? No. Sal? No. Lauren? Yes. And what does that give us? Six. Only two minutes. Sorry? Only two minutes. Okay. Okay. We've, we've granted your request. Thanks Thank for you. coming in. And, and I, I understand what you mean about uh, people coming back in, and, and we had a number of occasions in the last year where we had people who didn't come in and we weren't really clear on why they weren't here. And I always want to make sure people have a good chance to be heard. And so I realize that may come across as a burden to people, but other people might say, well, hey, I wasn't able to be there and I couldn't be uh, didn't get a chance to make my case. And so I really want to 
make sure everyone who has a case to be heard gets okay. heard. So thanks for coming in. Thank you very much. I'll be a mom soon. Well, I don't. I saw that you said you want to be a model citizen. No, I probably are. Continue. People, people get into financial difficulties, and I don't think there's any moral. I don't catch any moral judgment for that. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, uh, Joshua Green. You just got to... just just logged in. Yes. Okay. Perfect time. <clears throat> I haven't seen him up here yet. Ask to unmute the Ah, Joshua Green, I see you now. Thanks for uh, logging in. Can you hear me okay? And can you unmute yourself? Great. Okay, since you're, you just got here, I will uh, ask you to uh, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm, affirm subject to the pains and penalties of perjury? The testimony you're about to sit give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Great. Thank you. Okay. We've got your request um, for an abatement of personal property taxes. And could you tell us what your situation is? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you. I um, received the letter for... Um, the most recent calendar year and filled out the information. And um, I have well under $10,000 of personal business property. I never received a letter for the previous year of which the city wants me to pay for, but I never received a letter to let me know that I had to pull a letter out. And so your view is that there's a manifest error of the listers because you don't have the uh, level of property, personal property that uh, that you're listed as. Um, yeah, twofold. One, I don't have the property um, that was listed. I don't even know what was listed, but I my property hasn't changed, and I never got a letter in the first place. So I don't know how I'm supposed to pay something. I don't know I'm supposed to pay, let alone I don't qualify for the payment charges in the first place, second place. Mm -hmm. um, Ev, do you know anything about this or Charlotte, you know? Is... Well, yes, because um, when, you know, I contacted him about the payment, he said that, first of all, what he's saying is he never got the um, notice that the uh, assessor's office sends out every year that's due April 20th, um, asking them to list what their personal property is at and what it's worth. And if it's less than 10,000, there is no tax. Um, and um, he basically said the same to me. I don't see why I should pay tax that I never knew about. And um, so I. Gave him the right to, you know, gave him the appeal form and said, if you want to appeal it, this is how you would do it. I, I didn't have the authority to eliminate it without the, this process. Sure. And, and could you tell us what your business is and what the business property is that you have? Um, yeah, um, my business is Vermont Natural Family Medicine. I'm a, a naturopathic doctor. I practice primary care and specialty care. Um, I recently uh, took over Dr. Lydia Fazy's practice in Montpelier um, and uh, have a satellite, a small little 13% of my practice in Vermont is in Montpelier. So that's, that, that's kind of it. So some furniture and 
office equipment? Uh, yeah, very minimal. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing this whole picture here. So, um, and maybe that would be the one to maybe explain this. Well, um, this is always something that is difficult for people because we have, there's no laws on, there's a lot, and we have um, by rights the right to charge a personal property tax on the value of a professional office or, or a business, whatever. However, um, there's a lot of people that move into town, don't even know this exists, and there's nothing. Um, and when somebody buys a business, um, there's nothing that requires them to uh, file anything in the city or when they sell it. Um, and so it's kind of hard for the assessor's office to know when businesses come and go. And in fact, um, the assessor and his assistant James down the three years actually walk around the city and see the signs and, you know, um, and of course this year had, you know, um, we've had a lot of issues with mail. So I, more than him, I've had a lot of people say, I never got this bill. I have people tell me they never got the property tax bill too. Okay, so he's saying he, never saying got it. he didn't get it. So he was not able to tell the city what his property was. And then the city he went ahead and charged him a property tax or a personal property tax. Anyway, what did the city base that personal property tax assessment on? When the um, person that has a known property, uh, a known business, or personal property in the city, if they don't file, um, it's estimated, and I, uh, I believe I know that. Um, the assessor's office in this particular case, and one similar tickets, um, assessed it at the minimum of ten thousand. Um, and and he's saying that this year he did file it because he did get the form. He did file it. It was less than ten thousand, and and so he didn't get a tax bill this year. I don't know if he can hear me. Yes. Yeah. Did you get a tax bill this year? Um, I got a letter in the mail asking me to fill out what, what my personal business property was. And I filled that out and it was, uh, I believe well under 10,000. Yeah. So he wouldn't have gotten a tax. And so that was the same the last year that you're asking for the day before you had less than $10,000 worth of personal property. Okay. Uh, Rosie, where are you set now? I'm set. I just wanted to clarify that at no point he had more than $10,000. Correct. Okay. Any other questions from anybody? All right. Is there a motion to uh, grant this abatement? Or of any, any other motion? Uh, I move we grant the abatement of, is it 8948? Is that what we're looking at? 8948 plus penalties. For a total of $101. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Green, you're all set. Thank you very much. Your request is granted. Thank you. Judy. Judy Greenwald, yes. Can you, have you been able to hear? Uh, no, I can't hear very well or uh -huh. see very well. So can you speak loudly for me? Yeah, I'll try to. Now, now that we're on to your case, try to make sure. Can you hear me at this volume? Can you hear him at that volume? No. <laughs> yes. yes. I, 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 I'm, come, I can't. Try to get up, come up closer, yeah. Okay. I'm Judy Greenwald. I live at One Sunset Avenue for the past 24 years. I'm 90. Um, I submitted a 30-page report, detailed, very detailed, which I was asked to do, and I, I think I'm here to answer questions about that report. Yeah, and so in general, you would say that your issue is that your income is just not enough to pay the property tax. My Social Security went up 1.3, and my tax went up 201%. Okay. 
So it's a little out of balance. I have a very small income, as you saw, 15700 and which I managed to pay last year, my taxes, fine. But this is a 200% increase, and I just don't have the funds to pay it. And I'm not, I'm not ready to move yet. So I'm not asking for a complete abatement. I'm just asking it for a little um, less tax. Uh -huh. Any, anybody have any questions? Did you read the report? No. Very detailed. Very oh, detailed, yes. yes. Well, I thought it was important that you know where I stand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I appreciate you doing that. For me. So, any any comments or questions any from questions? members of the board? Mary. So, this is a question for the board. I just need some information. Is this is this a case where the state's adjustment of in of the its ability to reimburse based on income is lagging by a year? Do we can we tell that? Hmm. Marty, I don't think so. We don't. The values are the same. Oh, the values yeah, are the same yeah. from the previous right. uh, yeah. uh, I think the increase is just the increase in the budget. Okay, so it's not. Yeah. Mary, you're Terry. So it looked to me as though the amount of money you got from the state this year was less than you got last I year. I called them. Right. Yeah. And they said that because of my income, that's all they could give me. Right. So this seems to me a case of property values go up, but incomes don't go up because they're not related at all. It's a completely different thing. And the state tries to make up for that. But the state is really falling short. And so I think it's our job to make up the difference. And unfortunately, I wish the state were not falling short. I wish the state would take care of this. But... So I move that we, um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking for. I'm asking that I would be happy to pay my taxes. I just can't pay that much. And do you know what you can pay? I, I, I said I would be able to pay 250 which is more than last year. 250 per quarter? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, then I move that we... Um, actually, someone else did math. You could yeah. move the we abate the taxes down to the level of 250 per quarter. Yeah, that's right. Done. That's okay. Does that work for you? Uh, it's not ideal, but I'll make it work. I didn't hear what you said. He's figuring out. Any? Oh. <laughs> is there a second? Yes. Second. And is there any discussion? Yes, sir. I, I totally agree with the fact that income doesn't relate to what real property values are. And, and we have a really flawed system. I'm just kind of worried about the consequence of this. Um, I'd like to figure out a way to make this work. But if we do this for this, applicant, then don't we have to do this for virtually everybody else in a similar, everybody else, not virtually everybody else in the same situation? And what does that do to us? The value, the value on the 24 and 25 tax return is exactly the same of the value of the house. Mm -hmm. It's the same. It didn't go up. But but our taxes went up because we're spending more. Like I and I say that as so much the city and the schools fall as anybody. I mean it's a it's a problem that's well beyond you, unfortunately. I, so I don't have I don't know what to do. I, I'm just concerned. I don't know if others have thoughts about. <laughs> an alternative or Rosie. Yeah. So I think the taxpayers presented a very good case here that she has, she doesn't have the ability to pay. Um, and so I think 
you know, we're acknowledging there are other factors outside of her income that are um, impacting that and, and the discrepancy between what the state does and, and how it affects low income folks is is part of that. But she's presented a really strong case that, you know, she doesn't have she presented her income and her expenses, and I'm um, willing to support this on that basis, um, not just on the basis that the difference that the state's paying is not making up. Um, so I, I don't actually see a problem with it, and I don't think that we need to therefore grant this to everybody else who's in the same situation um, unless they present a similarly strong case that they don't have the ability to pay. Okay. Thanks, Rosie. <laughs> Anybody else? Or are we ready to vote? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank on you. Thank you. Okay. Next up, we have Ed Haggard. Yeah, I, I helped Ed with this, um, and at the time I spoke to him, I said, you know, you, you want to speak in terms of taxes or charges on real or personal property lost or destroyed and unable to pay because he, you know, clearly doesn't uh, seem clear to me. He did not give me any more information. But um, I realized afterwards that it's taxes on charges of real or personal property lost or destroyed during the tax year. And he did have already have all that abated um, during that tax year. So I don't know how much that complicates things. Um, obviously, in terms of ability to pay, if the place is substantially damaged and could be considered uninhabitable then, which I think substantially damaged that is the message of that, then one could argue, and I would argue, that he can't afford, he does not have the ability to pay to knock down this house and build a new one. Um, so that that would be, I think, the argument I would make on his behalf. <clears throat> Lauren and I have both been in this house, and it is not habitable. <laughs> Um, Rosie. So I think that Ed is one of the folks who are applying for a FEMA buyout. Is that the case? Yes. I would be pretty comfortable abating the taxes for everybody who's waiting for a FEMA buyout that the city has supported. It, like if the city has supported the buyout, um, which I think is the case here, um, yes. it seems to me that the city's support of the buyout is a pretty strong indication that we think that it continues to be damaged. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it's kind of screw. The wording is, is kind of screwy because it's already damaged. It didn't happen during this tax year, but uh, but what do we do with situations like this where the property is uh, damaged in one tax year and the damage continues to exist on into the future? There. Yeah, this is my question also, and I'm wondering if the um assessed value of the property should be adjusted so that then the tax is lowered accordingly. So if the, the damage happened in the previous tax year, but the house is still uninhabitable, shouldn't the value of the house reflect the fact that it's uninhabitable? We and did. Then... We adjusted the value. Okay. Um, we had this conversation a lot because there's a few people waiting for the FEMA buyout, and we have to have some sort of value on it. So what we decided is to drop the value to where it should be, and then they would wait for the buyout and in the meantime, coming for a baby. Mm -hmm. So the values have, have all been adjusted for these substantially damaged properties. And Rosie, do you have something else to say? As Sorry, no, I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't love her. Okay, thanks. Carry you. Yeah, I'm I'm all for abating the taxes of people who are waiting for the buyouts. I'm just not 100% clear under what part of the statute we're allowed to do that. So do you think we should get some legal advice or advice from the Department of Taxes? 
before we take action? John? I, I think we should take action, even if it is stretching, you know, a bit. So one option is to abate it on the basis of unable to pay. We've set a standard for ourselves about unable to pay in you know, other situations. We could decide that in the case of these folks waiting for the FEMA buyout, we're going to have a different standard um, rather than making them present all their income to us again. I would feel comfortable doing that in this very specific flood-related situation. Or we could say property has been lost or destroyed and it's still lost and destroyed during this tax year. So, but I'm, I'm happy to do the, do that for all the taxpayers. So I, I think that's the basis on which we abated it last year. Right. Mm -hmm. I, and it seems like the situation is the same. It's tied to the, it's tied to the, the, um, condition of the property. And it seems to me that if it if it worked last year, it would it would be a valid uh, a valid reason. Okay. And, and do we have a motion yet? We don't I I move that we abate the taxes of the talent um, based on it being um, lost or destroyed and continuing to be lost and destroyed. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? I'm going to abstain on this one. I don't know if you need a roll call for that. But I don't know. Okay. Just just because I feel a little twitchy about it. Uh -huh. No, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I don't know All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? You don't even, uh, parliamentary law, you don't even need to ask for abstentions. But since you were announcing you wanted to, get that on the record. <laughs> uh, John McCann, step on up. I know most of you know who I am and certainly know who my wife is. Um, my testimony is very personal. You may know or not know about what's happened in our lives over the last couple of years, but I do have a statement and uh, it's easier for me to just read this than to try to make sure I nail every aspect of what has happened. My name is John McCann, and I co-own North Branch Vineyards with Representative Kate McCann. North Branch Vineyards is an international award winning small winery based in Montpelier, Vermont, and we've been producing grape wines grown in Vermont over the past 17 years. Currently, we cultivate 3,200 grape vines, including seven varieties, on our 13.7 acre farm in Middlesex, Vermont, which we planted in 2018. In past years, we purchased grapes while our vineyard matured, and we produce roughly 6,000 to 10,000 bottles annually. Our winery is currently located at 82 Trillium Hill in Montpelier in our cellar. I am here today to provide a timeline of our struggles as a Montpelier business, beginning with COVID through this past catastrophic disaster. In 2020, life changed across the globe. COVID-19 was among us and cities across the US like Montpelier became a ghost town. North French vineyards like all other food and beverage business were ordered to shut down. This was a huge blow for us. Prior to COVID, North French vineyards was selling roughly $75,000 in wine, through festivals, farmers markets, and in our tasting room. Our revenue at the end of 2020 was $7,627. It wasn't until 2022 when everything started to reopen that we increased our sales to 31,000, a far cry from the $75,000. This next part is going to be 
a little harder for me to read to you, so I may have to take some time. In October of 2022, our family was in crisis. Kate, my wife, my best friend and business partner was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer, which mass dies to her liver. She found out this news five days prior to becoming elected as your state representative. A time where we were supposed to be celebrating, we were falling apart. I was scared and dealing with PTSD. My mother at age 54 was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer and passed away at age 55. North Grand Finish was the last thing on my mind. Kate saw a surgeon at UVM who told her that she was not a surgical candidate and also saw a UVM oncologist who told her she was that they would provide chemotherapy until her body couldn't take it anymore. At this point, I was losing my mind and wondering how I was going to take care of my two girls by myself and how life would help my best friend. Kate and I said that we would not go down with a fight if either of us got cancer and we were determined to beat this disease. We sought out a second opinion at Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York City. It was there that we found hope. Kate saw a colon surgeon, a liver surgeon, an oncologist that told Kate they would cure her, but it would be a long, tough road. With three rounds of chemo, two major surgeries, to remove several tumors on Kate's liver and colon, she is now one year cancer-free. She needs to be two years cancer-free to be deemed cured. Needless to say, I'm on pins and needles every three months when she has a CT scan. Nothing is bad as being diagnosed with cancer, and we both said 2023 was going to be a year of hopes and dreams. However, that was not the case. In 2023, two natural disasters hit our Middlesex Vineyard. We did not produce any wine from our Middlesex Vineyard in 2023 because we lost 80% of our vines to the May 18th freeze and the remaining 20% to the excessive rain in July and August. We expected a full crop in 2023 since the vines were fully mature and if there were no natural disasters, we would have picked 40,000 pounds of grapes and produced roughly $317,000 in value-added wine. The natural disaster set us back more than two years in revenue, and we were forced to seek financial assistance. Even though both disasters were declared national disasters by the president, the federal government did not provide any financial assistance. I have attached, and I will leave with this group, form CC 576, which I filled out with the FSA for notice of loss of each disaster. We were awarded grants by BGAP, NOFA Vermont, and Vermont Community Foundation. These grants were extremely needed, but not enough to cover our losses. It's been a it's been a year and we were still waiting. It's been a year and we're still waiting for the Dig Deep Vermont grant, um, which I was told three weeks ago that they would be paying out by the end of the month. And tomorrow's the end of the month and I still haven't had any signs of if we're even gonna get it or how much we're gonna get. And now we're not sure if we're gonna get any since the last hurricane ruined more farmers' crops in Vermont. So fortunately, we were not impacted this time and we are expecting a small crop this September. North Branch Vintage was delivered a one, two, three punch and we have struggled financially over the past several years and we're looking for help on our past due property taxes and water sewer bills. North Branch Vintage had a minus $23,000 loss in 2020, a minus $33,000 loss in 2021, a minus $25,000 loss in 2022, and an $18,000 loss in 2023. 
I've also provided a copy of our Schedule C for all of those four years for everybody to look at uh, your leisure. As we continue to see extreme weather here in Vermont, you might ask what North Branch Vineyards is doing to mitigate further financial risks. Like many businesses in Vermont, North Branch Vineyard needs to be resilient to extreme weather and have additional revenue streams. North Branch Vineyards is trying to secure financial assistance to buy a 40 by 60 tent to erect at the vineyard and rent for weddings and host wine events throughout the summer. Uh, unfortunately, that won't happen this summer. This would be for next summer. This additional revenue, revenue stream will help diversify our farm. Last legislation, we tried to push a bill through called H-128, which provided uh, businesses like mine to become an accessory on farm business, which would allow us to bypass the Act 250 process. That passed through the House Ag Department, but unfortunately it was turned down in the Senate uh, natural resources. So we're still having to file for Act 250 permits, which is going to be a timely and costly effort to do this. Prior to becoming a farmer, I launched rockets from Cape Canaveral in Vandenberg Air Force Base. This was an exciting job and I loved it very much. But we wanted to raise our children in Vermont, which is a special place as you all know. Making wine and growing grapes, grapes has always been my passion. I was able to watch my children grow rather than work a 60 hour work week making six figures. If I could do it all over again, I would. Thank you for hearing my story. Thanks, John. Um, so I'm trying to understand your situation, the the vineyard and the, the growing operation is not in the city of Montpelier, it's in Middlesex. Our winery is in Montpelier. Okay. That's where we process um, bottom and south. Mm -hmm. And uh, and would, so your vineyard is in Middlesex. It is in Middlesex. Your, it's actually one foot in Middlesex, one foot in Montpelier, but it's technically in Middlesex. Mm -hmm. And was the, was any of the property in uh, any of the real real estate in Montpelier? Uh, damaged or destroyed? It was not. Okay. Yeah, John. So um, you put on here that you're basing this on taxes lost or destroyed during the tax year, but is there also a ability to pay issue? Um, so my accountant just finalized my taxes last week. So I still need to file for the property tax adjustment through the state. Um, we are planning to pay on the 15th this quarter coming up. Um, obviously it's inflated and hopefully that will come down when I do the filing for the homestead and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm assuming that that will get credited on the next quarter. Um, so yes, we're, we're, our, we believe we have the ability to pay the upcoming tax bill. But this uh, back, back tax bill of uh, principal, Interest and penalties of 42 that you don't have the ability to pay that. I do not right now. Yeah, John. If I can be pedantic again, I think that's really important because we're not talking about damage um, or an ability or rather an ability to pay for this tax year we're in. We're talking about the previous tax year, 
which the Board of Abatement can do at any time. You can hear an abatement for something 10 years ago, and that's fine. But I think that means we're looking at last year's tax bill to abate, and it looks like that fits right in very nicely to what it looks like what we were already talking about is the what what they're behind on and the taxes and penalties. So I just throwing that out there for to be purely pedantic, but uh, I thought it should be said. And you're not being pedantic because the form that we received is it says that it's based on taxes or charges upon real or personal property lost or destroyed. And what you're paying taxes on in Montpelier wasn't lost or destroyed. Everything else was. We understand, we understand that clearly. So that strikes me as an ability to pay question. And so, and, and just to be clear to make sure I'm getting it. It's for this past tax year. You just said you think you're okay with this coming yes. one due. Yes. The the ability to not pay last year's tax bill is because of the trifecta that yeah. I just read to you guys. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, yes, and, and this, this is a, a slight little quirk here in this. Um, and John, in the past, um, the year that shown here, and I, I think probably he forgot to include the request, but he was taxed um, in 23-24 for personal property. This year you filed the form and you spent away and didn't file the forms in previous years, so we got the minimum 10000 Which I think is 300 and something. Something dollars, so. Which I can pay. You can pay that. Yes. Okay, because by our city ordinance, that if a businesses within the home, the real estate home, any delinquency on the personal property gets paid off first. So he pays that. And I also want to say is I noticed that in the um, paperwork, obviously, because John that hasn't had um, a chance, and I haven't been sending him because I knew that he was trying to work through things. Um, the actual tax and, and counties and interest that show on the account has Outstanding, and this thing is good through um, August 15th is 4,334.92. And then he, he also asked for help on the utilities, the water sewer, the water and sewer, and that one, uh, let's see, I think I'm at 3,000 something. Um, Oh, um, there was an old person also asked if I wanted to switch. That's not. Is the water and sewer bill in this paperwork? No, it is not. It's not that we got, no. Because I, I, I'm pretty sure he asked for the choice. I do know it's in the realms of $3,000. So, um, yeah, I suppose you could just say uh, to the balance that uh, to, you know, if you decide to make that motion, just say for the balance, we will see um, up to um, August 15th. Okay. Um, and then the other one is so, folks, I'm trying to think what our practice has been in the past. Have we amended a request like this to go to a different category, or have we asked the taxpayer to uh, refile? And I just I don't recall how we've handled it. Um, yeah, the the trippy thing here is I think you could bounce around because that form is merely a tool to help us um, to help us do this. It's not necessary or required. All, I, all that's necessary or required would be some kind of formal contact. So, I mean, you could just write a letter to me now, I suppose, but I think 
the request for abatement is enough. Okay, gotcha. Uh, Rosie. So I would, I, I definitely agree that we're considering it as a inability to pay. Um, I don't think there's a need to make the taxpayer come back for that. Um, typically, you know, we, we've heard a lot about losses here. I'm convinced that there have been a lot of losses, but we typically would ask about what assets there are and, and what other efforts have been made um, to secure funds to pay off the taxes. And I don't know if that's something that is in the documents that were shared with folks there in the room. Um, Mr. McCann did say that he brought in some forms. I haven't seen them. I don't know what's on them. Uh, the only thing I brought today with me are the forms that I filed with the federal government for the losses that we sustained in the new two natural disasters. So these are forms that document the amount these, of the loss? This is just documents that we, we filed the loss with the agency. And you said FSA, is that it's Farm Service it's farm Administration? Service. Yes, agency. Okay. Um, and it was dated on August 28th of 2023. Mm -hmm. So we filed that immediately after the losses. Yep. Um, um, that was to make a clear record of our of our losses, so that way we had something as evidence down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually had them come out and look at our vineyard and and verify. Um, but unfortunately, there wasn't a program available, and the one program. This is your federal government for you. So you could you could apply for a disaster loan, but the only way you could get it through the federal government was to be turned down by somebody else first. Mm -hmm. And it it, it, it it was just continuously spinning our wheels to try to recover and make revenue to live in our household. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to make mention, um, I'm working seven days a week right now. Um, two days a week, I'm working for a uh, landscaper, 21 hours in two days to make ends meet. So I can be in my vineyard for the additional five days to make sure that we do get a harvest this year to get back on track. Um, and, and let me jump in. And, and Rosie, to answer your question, we don't have documentation, but I believe the testimony was included a statement of the uh, net negative revenues of the business for three or four years in a row. For four years. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I, I definitely, I definitely heard that there were were net negative revenues for sure. I don't. I think we need to see more proof of that. Um, I'm just wondering what what kind of existing assets there are. Um, and I'm sorry, John, I know this is really <laughs> feels really personal and invasive, but we, no, no, we do hold right. kind of everybody to the, that standard. And so, um, you know, in the past, we've been kind of looking to see our folks struggling to, to put food on the table and that kind of thing. Um, that's because the rest of the taxpayers in Montpelier are, are asked to take up the uh, slack here. That's uh, that's the kind of level that we're looking at. Um, uh, and that's that's the level that I would expect to hold Capital Plaza to as well, to be frank. Like, I want to keep everybody to a pretty fair standard there, understanding you've been through an, you know, a huge amount of stress here. Un so, un unfortunately, any, yeah. unfortunately, that being a state representative is a pay cut for Kate. Um, so not only did I not make revenue, but she's making less revenue. Uh, yep. And she's seventy five percent as a teacher, so seventy five percent of her salary has been cut as well to become a state representative. Uh, mm -hmm. So there's there's certainly evidence there that yes, we are struggling to. Uh, I would say that Kate is paying for our mortgage and our food, and I'm trying to keep up with all the utilities in the house. Okay. Anybody else have anything? So, Mary. Th this is just this interesting problem we have of needing to treat 
people equitably or fairly across the board. Um, I, I, I'm hearing and understanding the testimony, and, and I would <coughs> the a motion to support this a request for abatement for the past year makes sense, but we need some sort of documentation to Rosie's point to substantiate that. And I'm wondering that what, so we understand the revenue loss, but you know, just kind of what the other assets are that are, you know, the other opportunities that there are there. And so I'm wondering if we can, kind of craft this in a way to um, grant the request contingent upon and maybe just a, a letter that just kind of gives us some basic information that you know, gives us a framework to hang this request on. Well, allow me to make a suggestion rather than doing that since that we didn't do that for Capital Plaza. Right. I suggest we ask the taxpayer, you know, defer action on it the way we did with Capital Plaza, ask the taxpayer to bring in documentation and take it up at our next meeting. I it's assume- in a couple of weeks, right? It's we don't have weeks. one set, yeah. Seven. But it'll probably be sometime in August. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we can do it. I don't mean to put- I just need to have a clarification yeah. from you all what exactly it is that you're looking for. Um, cause you, when you say assets, uh, you know, asset, does that mean like my but, farm tractor? No, does that I mean, mean my a statement of your income, you know, what, what, what you're able to put, how you're able to pay or not pay. You, you, you've told us something verbally about, um, Kate's income. You've talked about yours, but just write it down. So put it in a letter. Yeah. That's easy to do. Is that what we're looking for? That's, that's what I think we're looking for. I think Rosie looks like you yeah. have some. Yeah, so I, I think we're also looking for, you know, if you had to pay this, what wouldn't you be paying for? You know, is it that you're not putting money into your retirement account or is it that you're not buying food <laughs> not buying food for your family? So like that's that's the sort of level that we're trying to gauge and would, would be helpful in making a decision. So any, I again, I know it's very personal information, but anything you're able to tell us um, with that regard, I think is very helpful to to weighing whether whether to accept or not the request. Oh. Sal, yeah, uh, and John, it's mainly because we've changed the the category that we're we're dealing with this in to inability to pay that we're asking for this information. I, I'm I would also like to see, I guess, the exact the exact amount of the abatement request. I, I don't have a grasp of what the what the actual figure is. So that was included. Uh, I'll have to an update. Okay. okay. Now I can work with that, and I can put that in my letter. As sure. Well. Okay. I think we're set then. So Thanks. again, um, just to clarify, who will be sending me information to exactly what you want in the letter? No one's sending you anything. You've got what you what we've told you is in general terms what we're interested in. So, and then okay. it's up to you to bring to us the documentation of the income income and the gap to show okay. why you can't make these the payment on this previous year's tax payment, and then you get it to the clerk and <laughs> it'll be distributed to the board before the uh, next meeting, which you'll be notified of. Okay. And we're certainly not expecting you to go through everything you went through tonight because it's just a matter of, you know, make, making sure we're being good stewards of uh, the taxpayer's money. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Okay. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. RSA LLC. Um, one, one, six. Do you want me to leave all this documentation with you? Um, why don't you come or to attach a conclusion? It to the letter. Yeah, come to a conclusion of what you need to bring in and okay. attach it. Thank you very much again. Well, 
All right, Tim, you're up. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I don't think I was here in the beginning to raise my right hand. I don't know if you want me to. Sure. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great. Okay. Uh, and we also have, you've, you've got the a note from Sarah LaCroix. I, I do. Yeah. Okay. And her proposal is to you know, waive two thirds of the energy charges. So, an abatement of $3,378.26.23. Is that an acceptable resolution to you? No, I mean, um, okay. St Steve and I, you know, we've been going through this. Um, the bill from October 22 to March 23 was 10835 And from October 23 to 24, which was in encompasses the flood, was 12,501. Um, you know, part of that 12,501, as you are aware, are is capacity charges. You know, we call it, you know, kind of ready to serve. Um, and the other part is the energy charges. You know, so I'm sorry, Tim, I, I should have, when I, when you said no, it's not accepted, why don't you just take it from the top and explain the whole issue? So, okay. So <clears throat> you know, with the flood in July of last year, um, we lost the ability to use our district heat in um, you know, the building. And we still currently don't have the ability to use the district heat. We've got um, a pump that was put in in January of 24. We have the meter now. The city put in the box um, last week. And now we're waiting to get the panel installed. We wanted to get it up into the first floor versus putting it back into the basement of the panel. So um, we've been working, you know, with that process. So, you know, without um, the pump to be working, there's no way to pump, you know, the heat through the building. And, you know, with that, um, we've had to use electric heat, you know, to the tune of about, $4,200 increase over the previous year because we were not getting, um, you know, the heat out of the district um, system. So, <clears throat> you know, we, again, the, we're not having the energy coming out of it. You know, we feel that, you know, really the full $12,000 should you know, not have to be paid. Both the capacity and the extent that you haven't had the, we haven't had the ability to do it. Um, and we haven't used the heat. Uh, there has been some vacancies in the building. Um, you know, there were in the buildings that the part that was occupied, we've been doing it with electric heat. But so your bottom line argument is you didn't, Get any heat from sir from the system, and the system did not have the capacity to serve you. Correct. So you shouldn't owe anything for that period. Okay. Yep. Questions? Go ahead. I'm going to express a little frustration here because I think what this board asked was for you all to go back and work with Sarah LaCroix and come up with something that could be agreed on because a lot of these details were seen to be beyond the expertise of this board. And it sounds to me from what I understand is that you all did not work with Sarah and we simply have two competing requests which leaves us in the same position that we were in last time. I, I Steve went to the meeting with uh, Sarah, so I'm, I can't speak to that. I can, you know, certainly 
come back. My understanding was it had to go back to the Board of Abatement, and that was the only way this part would be okay. And we didn't agree to this, and we thought we'd be heard here at the, the board. So we did meet with Sarah. You did? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. That's yeah, no, what I didn't met. understand. Perfect. No, in the letter, I think, I confirm, uh, you know, she said that, you know, thanks for the board of Bateman for the conversation, you know, to the following. Yeah, no, we, we met, Steve met with Sarah okay. and had a meeting. And she came up after the meeting had came up with this recommendation. Okay, my assumption. And then, and then my understanding was it had to go to get approved by you guys for the 3000 And we didn't agree with it. And we had to come to this board meeting. My, my assumption, I think, that the will of the board was that you all work together to come to an agreed upon number. And, that puts us, and that's what puts us in the same situation. It's almost with the lack of expertise this board has, it would almost feel like a coin flip, at least to me. And that's very uncomfortable well, for me. Then that's not our understanding. Our understanding had to go back to the board. Yeah, I, it does. And we're the board. And what I'm expressing is the same, I think, frustration the board had previously that we don't have the expertise to make a final decision, which is why we wanted you to work with Sarah and come up with something mutually agreeable. That's uh, that's my concern. I feel like we might be in the same place we were last meeting. Well, that's, that's how I read this letter. I thought you guys had an agreement already that you and Sarah had agreed on this 3300. No. Okay. No. I mean, we can go back to Sarah and talk more, but I mean, this, you know, after Steve's meeting, this is what came up. And, you know, um, to the best, you know, when Steve told me today, he, you know, had no other conversation with her and that it was supposed to be taken care of here. So if the thing is to go back to Sarah and continue that discussion, we certainly will. Okay. Rosie. So I'm, I'm looking at Sarah's summary um, and Sarah states that the pump that circulates the heat and Sarah's here, so maybe she can speak more to this. Um, the pump that circulates the heat from the district heat system through the building um, was not able to be the circulator pump was not able to be installed until late January or early February. Who is responsible for that pump? Sarah. I, I don't want to overstep and I appear to be sideways, so I'm sorry. Um, so I, um, I met with Steve um, when we had a conversation, you know, he laid out all of the um, things I believe Mr. Ayer has laid out uh, tonight. Um, the capacity charge itself is a fixed charge and it's based on the prior year usage, not the current year. Um, so I am not comfortable providing any recommendation on the capacity charge. That one I would have to leave up to you. Um, I tried to use a reasonable mathematical approach to allocating the energy charge based on um, the conversation I had with Steve. The city was ready and able to serve all district heat customers, district heat on October 1st. Um, whether or not the buildings were able to accept that, um, it, you know, it depends on each building, but we were able to serve it and they were able to draw on it. They may not have been able to draw on it to its fullest capacity, um, but from the city's perspective, we were providing the heat. Um, and so I, I tried to meet in the middle and provide an unbiased recommendation uh, based on math. Um, so that's where I landed. I sent this out to John and Steve um, a few weeks back, I believe, after I met with Steve and in it, I um, at the bottom of the email asked Steve if he agreed with this or not to let us know um, if you all agreed with it, then, um, of course, you didn't need to come to this meeting, but because you don't. Um, this is the first time hearing of it, so it's the best I can give, if that's helpful. So could somebody answer, thank you, Sarah. Um, could somebody answer the question about whose responsibility that circulator pump is? <laughs> that's the building owner. Okay. So your recommendation, Sarah, is based on kind of giving you're giving a little grace for the fact that the building owner was unable to replace the circulator pump. 
Right. And based on changes in occupancy, we estimated usage based on the five year historical average, which I have no idea what the occupancy of that building is. Um, but they noted they were two thirds vacant and then one third vacant. And given that that pump wasn't actually circulating their heat through the building, I was feeling like that was a fair adjustment to the energy charge. Mm -hmm. And it, it, just to I want to observe that if um if the building had been vacant for a reason other than flooding, we wouldn't consider vacancy to be a reason to not not have somebody pay their their fees. Um, uh, if there hadn't right. been a flood, there would have been a meter in the building, which okay. would have the meter been measuring. The, and yeah. then they would so have there was no the way real... to measure the gotcha. usage, okay. so we had to average. Okay, that that was a piece I was missing there. But if if a building were totally, if following up on what Rosie Rosie's question, if the building were totally vacant, but not due to flooding, at a minimum, the building owner would be liable for all the uh, capacity charges, right? That's correct. And then they'd be metered for the usage? Yes. So, so all other buildings were able to be used for district heat? The uh, city was 1st. able to, the city was providing heat to every building on October 1st. Um, whether they were able to accept that and distribute it to their building was individual specific. There were people who were back online immediately. And you, when did the meters get installed? I mean, were you, the, that, all of, you weren't able to measure it, right? I mean, Nobody had a meter installed um, for the current heating season unless they did not sustain flood damage. Um, those had actual meters, but everybody else was estimated based on a five-year historical average um, for energy usage. The capacity charges were fixed before the heating season began and would be charged regardless of usage. So uh, all, all I guess we're saying is, you know, we don't didn't have uh, a pump that was working. We didn't use the energy. I guess you, you know they're saying that it was there if we had the ability to have everything up and running. I, I'm not sure of all the timelines. My understanding, what Steve said, is the box was just installed, um, you know, to get the panel done last week. So you know we're hoping to have you know, things up here in the next month to be able to use the system, so. So come this this year's heating system, this coming heating system, yeah. you'll, be, you'll be good to go. Yeah, we'll be good to go. Great, yeah. Folks, do we have any other questions? Do we, are we, or do we feel we're, we have enough information to make a decision? I actually feel we probably have enough information. Okay, which <laughs> time I was the one dubious about. Yeah. It. <laughs> okay, would some uh, Rosie? So I will make a motion to abate uh, the tax. Er, sorry, abate the fees, the bill, in the amount suggested by um, Sarah Lacroix. Okay. And is second. there? There's a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming in, Tim. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Tim, how's the apartment? Um, Good. Yeah, we should uh, August first. Great. Right. Great. Day after tomorrow. Yeah. No, we're putting final touches on tomorrow. Great. This is the uncommon market. Yes. It is handsome. Well done. Yeah. 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 We love it. It came out very well, and um, we'll be putting it back on the box. Yeah. All Thank right. You. Thanks. We're down to the last one. PM and D LLC. Ah. How's everyone doing? Great. How are you? Uh, doing great. So this is the building that Mad Taco is in, right? That is correct. Yep. And were you here at the beginning? Do you have a chance to be sworn in? Uh, I was here. I, I wasn't sworn in, though. Okay. Raise your right hand. You solemnly affirm that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. It is. Okay. Great. Thank you. 
and your request for an abatement is based on the building's been vacant for um since october since the flood of july of 23 23 um it was open for six days and then burned down on october 28th uh so our tenant has been unable to be in the building at all um they have been doing their best to keep all their employees on the payroll um so they're they're struggling big time um actually we do not pay the uh sewer and water bill they do typically um so this was a huge surprise to me when i got this bill this delinquency bill for the uh, water and sewer um, i paid it immediately because i didn't want to incur any more fees but I guess my under I, I don't understand how there can be a water and sewer bill when no one has been in the building since July of 2023, really. <clears throat> but I did pay it. Oh, and here's the uh, transaction sheet. Yeah, so this this bill would wasn't even mailed to me. I, I don't even know what bill I'm paying here. I simply didn't want to incur any more fees, so I immediately paid it. But I haven't even seen the bill, like when this water and sewer bill is from, like what timeline. <clears throat> well, does anybody anybody know the answer to that? Okay. Um, the last time that this had a so um, balance was um, the payment that was paid on uh, September 15th, which would have been usage for April, May, and June of 23. So they were paid up through currently in, in labor payments up through um, September 23rd, covered through June and goes to the after. Um, there would have been uh, some usage, um, and we can mail them copies of all the bills. I cannot explain if there was no water being used, you know, um, whether they were broken pipes from both the disaster of the flood and the fire that, you know, were used, water was leaking out of. So um, I don't know how that um, would be the end of that. And uh, Sarah's on the um, video, she may be able to better handle that. I will say that um, approximately during this period of time, that it's an average, I think right now it's like 67 something per um, utility uh, for every billing cycle. So everybody gets a, um, a minimum charge whether they use water or not, um, because we're providing the ability to use water. Um, a minimum bill runs around uh, right now around $135 a quarter. But this shows obviously that um, it shows usage. Um, and I don't know if uh, when they started working on it, um, if they were using water um, as, as part of the construction pieces of it. I don't know. Sarah, do you know anything that you can tell us? Um, so I am not familiar with this specific case. So I can't speak to it. I mean, everybody is billed a quarterly ready to serve fee for taking the water. Um, that's part of the billing structure. Um, it would then be based on metered usage. So um, if they're not using it, that does indicate that there could be a leak. And we do have a policy um, for identifying and um, providing documentation that you've dealt with the leak. And we would reduce the bill to two and a half times the average for those quarters. It's a one-time adjustment. Uh, but without further detail about the account, I can't say you know what is causing usage but it it would be being metered usage so that there's water being used somehow and i'm also wondering how how did this bill find me because i don't pay the bill the bill should have gone to our tenant and somehow this bill has come to me with all these penalties and that's what i'm understanding as well like how did this bill find me when i don't pay it 
It's because of me, because I know you and, and know that you own the building and live out of town. And so I didn't, um, when a bill starts getting this delinquent, and you know, we, in your case, we knew your tenant pays it, but by the city ordinance, the water bill is supposed to be in the name of the owner of the property uh, who can have it sent and care of a tenant um, on it. But yeah, I, I knew you owned the building. It wasn't getting paid. It was getting bigger. And, um, and uh, we can work with you to see if we can find you some of the answers that get you copies of the original bills and then um, try to uh, you know, figure out um, and we maybe can come back with a better uh, recommendation um, for your August meeting of what you know it could or could have been. And uh, but it was just funny because I know Mr. Kilman and his family. And I, I, I appreciate that. I know <laughs> sometimes doesn't pay no tax <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it seems to me you know we we had a number of properties in. Uh, that in the flood where there was some damage done to the water pipes and that yeah. caused the cause to just gush into the property and we don't know if that's part of what's going on here but it seems like we don't have enough information so yeah. I, I suggest we that you get together with Bev we and Sarah we figure out what happened and then take this up, up again at our next meeting and I, okay, that sounds good. Um, and he, at a minimum, I would ask that the penalties be taken off because, once again, I don't pay this bill. This bill found me, um, thanks to Bev. Um, but I paid it the second I got it. I paid every. I paid the entire bill, including the penalties. But I kind of feel like the penalty should be taken off because I didn't even know that the bill existed. <clears throat> well, we'll we'll do that all. In in one shot, we'll take we'll address all the issues, including whether you should pay the penalties or get the penalties repaid at one at the same time. See, the bill is in the name of um, TMD LLC, and we sent it. Um, we're sending it in care of your um, tenant. Obviously, they you know weren't using it probably didn't have the money or. Of the, I don't know, whatever their reasons for not paying, but the yep. bill, because you have a point that we tell them on this, um, that um, who wants the bill sent to the thing that has to stay in their name and care of that person, that is lazy. Because if they walk out the door, and that's why I know it's like you, I thought, oh boy, if they're not there anymore, he's responsible for whatever you are responsible for. Okay, I appreciate it. Yeah, at least a copy of the bill would be great just so I can see what copies of all the bills that you never saw. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a plan. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you. Yep. Have well, a good night. Water people to look at the meter and see what's going on. Yeah. And more than likely, it's exactly what Jackson yeah. That's what we have a lot of us that fought with the flood and the fire. Sure. Um, and as I looked at it, it is weird. There's only one sort of small one in that time frame. Right. And the others are kind of average and normal. So I don't know if they have one to fix in there. It sounds like maybe. Um, um, it's Tom, right? You hear saying? Yes, Tom. it's Tom. And, yeah. Um, did they take care of there was a plumbing issue or anything like that? Did they take care of that as part of your arrangement with them? Uh, uh, during the, the flood or the fire or? Or any time, just, just, yeah, in general. Because I guess what I'm curious about is, like I said, it, it, it would appear there's almost a normal... If it was a leak or a broken pipe, it would have been a lot bigger into this. So I, I don't really know. So let us look into it. I think we'll kind of come up to some type of regulation solution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. And he also was asking, you know, he, he probably is one of the few that actually did what the um, abatement uh, 
these covers and that he actually paid the taxes yep. and then asked that they, uh, the full year be funded because he couldn't do this. Yep. Not everybody has the ability to do that, but it, it certainly yeah. good for us that they do. It helped us. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Before we adjourn tonight's meeting, I just want to mention that got withdrawn. I just want to mention that for, to any, any JPs here, if you didn't see that email from the Secretary of State's office, that uh, we've I've gotten a couple of these requests. I've got a couple of email requests for uh, for a quote for uh, doing a doing a wedding. And it's this weird thing where they send you a thing saying, well, we'd like to do a wedding, 50 people, here's gonna be that. And, uh, and it appears to be some kind of scam, one of these overpayment scams. And so uh, I, I saw the first one and, I, and then I got this new email um, just the other day, and I was going to call the Secretary of State yesterday, and the email came out. So be careful. Yep. A point of clarification going back, and Charlotte may have picked up on this and keeps better notes than I do. Um, we talked mostly about the water and sewer. Was there a motion made about whether or not the taxes, because of the flood and fire, there, any any or all of that was going to be abated, or is that going to come back to? That'll come, yeah, come back to. But I, I assume, yeah, Sal. So. Okay. Um, is there a reason that the abatement application form doesn't have a little box that says abatement amount requested? I mean, I spend half my time trying to figure out what, how much people are asking for and for what purpose. I mean, we can always adjust it up or down, but wouldn't it make sense for us to say, what, what are you asking for? And at least have that as a starting point. Because this is the model from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns. So I never really thought about it, but yeah. we can put that on. Yeah, it's a lousy yeah. model. Uh, I, suggest we, <laughs> yeah. I suggest we add our own little box. Sounds that, good. Says that, that says well, that. Just think it would help. I also came from a town where we also asked people who were asking for uh, an abatement because of their inability to pay to give some sort of financial statement, income, expenses, yeah. not to the degree that Mrs. Greenwald did, but in a whole group yeah. yep. asking for if we good could idea. Warm for that, that could be very helpful. Oh, and like an expenses yeah. form yeah. versus yeah. Oh. Hmm. revenue and expenses. Yeah, I'd ask mm -hmm. for utility calls and taxes. And then and just things. indicate if you want to add more material, please do. Yeah. Or something yeah. Like. I, I can. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I could that's probably get that the form that Winter used. Uh -huh. We can adapt it. Okay, yeah, send that to me. That would be terrific. And then we can share this with the League of Cities and Towns. Okay, anything else? Or are we good to go? Okay, thanks, everybody. We're adjourned at 8.23 p.m. <laughs>